Before we get too far into this video, I do want to say that uh, TransTech did reach out and send me this product uh, for review. Um, I think that's because of my connection with Moda, who is a uh, ch the Chinese pilot for the Drone Racing League, um, and he's associated with TransTech. I think maybe works there. I'm not totally sure, um, but so they were they kind of reached out and asked me to, to if I would be interested in participating in doing a review unit. So just throwing that out there. That's why I have this in the first place. The other part of it is that, you know, with what's going on in the world right now, um, it's uh, it's great to have something that can fly anywhere, right? So things like this, like the Tiny Hawk 2 race, the Tiny Hawk 2, um, any kind of uh, brushed or brushless uh, micro drone is uh, obviously a pretty useful tool um, to have to be able to fly at your house or, you know, anywhere that's remote, um, stuff like that. So that's the other part of why I wanted was excited to do this uh, partnership with TransTech. At a high level, uh, some of the things that I'm really loving about this thing are its build quality. It's super sturdy, super durable. Um, I've crashed it into the ground a bunch of times. There's no sign of wear and tear except for on the props, which is to be expected. Um, the uh, I actually really like the stack that's in there. I took off the canopy a couple times to put it in my own receiver. Um, the VTX is doing pretty well from what I can see so far, just running on low power modes. It's giving me video all the way around my house. Um, and it's got some power. Like, it's not... I wouldn't say it's as fast as a five inch or anything like that, but it, it moves like you'll see some of the, at the very end of this video, there's just some racing footage and you'll see that it just is hauling around my house. And so I'm pretty excited about that. Things that I don't like about it so much are I'm not a big fan of canopy designs. But I'm not sure if there's really a way around that for uh, micro drones. Oh, the other thing I forgot to say that I do like about the, like a, on the positive side is the camera is amazing. It's a run cam uh, nano two, uh, which has like one of the best, I think picture qualities and latencies for analog video. So I am super stoked that that's included in this machine. Um, I don't think that the stock tune is proper. Um, I'm using too heavy of a battery um, compared to what the manufacturer recommends, but the performance that I saw from that wouldn't explain for me how bad the tune was out of the box. So in the video, I've included uh, some DVR where you can see my tuning notes. Um, you can just go and watch me kind of tune this machine out so you can at least maybe learn from something from that. And then I'll also post the PIDs over on my website, paulnerkola.com. So yeah, so the rest of this is just kind of me unboxing it, interacting with it for the first time, taking it out for some flights. Uh, I got my uh, third person, or I guess first person di uh, digital video from the Insta360 Go. That's this tiny little guy. Um, it pops out of its little like AirPod carrying case here. And that's the whole camera right there. And I basically just mounted it behind so you can kind of see the drone a little bit in frame. I thought that turned out pretty cool. So I, I figure a lot of people will ask me about that. Um, but yeah, so loving everything about it. Um, enjoy the rest of the video. Stay flying. One more note that I wanted to make is that if you are interested in purchasing, purchasing this, I've got a link that's a, an affiliate with TransTech Hobby in the description below. If, uh, if you choose to do that, that'll support this channel and more videos like this. Um, during the current situation that the world is facing, uh, I've also lost a bunch of work, so I'm trying to make as many videos as I can to stay on top of that, to keep you guys entertained, to do all of those sorts of things. So if you find yourself uh, going down that route, definitely consider using that affiliate link. All right, I'll stop selling you. Let's go check it out. This is the TransTech Hobby uh, Demon Race drone. Um, they sent it to me to do a review on it, um, and I was kind of excited because the uh, current situation we're in means that we can't fly everywhere, um, meaning that uh, I want to be able to fly around my house and, and in quick little spots here and there, and so I, they wanted to send me this little guy, which I think will fit the bill perfectly. All right. Thank you. 
Got some stickers, an instruction manual. That side's in Mandarin, it looks like. This side's in English. Set that aside. And then we're into the meat. Got a couple different canopies for it. It's a pretty tall canopy. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like that flying it, but uh, it looks, they're nice and durable, plasticky. Kind of like, remind me of like those like Easter egg eggs for some reason. Um, but I might have to put that green one on because you know me. Uh, we got the drone itself. Ooh, it actually feels pretty good, good in the hand. Um, it's uh, not really any flex across that side, more than is reasonable. XT30 on it. I'm not sure what VTX, I assume it's some sort of Transtech VTX. I've got to pull this canopy open shortly to put a receiver into it. I'm going to put a Futaba um, Micro 2001 SB. Um, no battery strap, but there's a nice little grippy pad. Um, looks like a good bit of camera tilt. Not sure what camera's in there yet either. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, but yeah, it feels really good in the hand. Like it's It's got some substance to it. It's not plasticky or anything like that. Back in the bag, we've got a uh, lipo strap, nice and small. Some sort of three pin connector for, I assume, a uh, receiver. Um, Allen key for the canopy, probably. Extra miscellaneous screws. I assume these are extra long screws for the ducts so it comes with these uh, or I guess prop guards would be more appropriate comes with a set of prop guards one two three four five actually it's nice an extra one in there um, and then so you can use these to uh, set up the um, to, to bump it to play fly with it inside or uh, in a more protected way so yeah we got some prop guards throw them there and then I believe it comes with two different sets of props um, we've got some, they're both by Gemfan, 24, or 2540 by 3 on that side, and uh, these are by 4, I'm not sure what angle they are, but uh, yeah, you got both some quad blades and some tri blades. Um, yeah, I'm not totally sure what voltage this is supposed to run, The uh, I was looking at everything online. Um, and I couldn't see whether it was supposed to be um, 4S or 3S or 2S. Um, I think I settled on 3S based on their 6,000 kV motors, 1106 6,000s, um, which run, in th the ESC is only 3 to 5S, so I think that a, a 3S at, with a 4-blade prop will be the right setup. I don't have a lot of uh, props for that, so hopefully I'll be able to kind of make do with what I got here, um, but I'm pretty stoked to go fly it. I think it's going to... I think it's going to impress me. <clears throat> All right, so let's get a receiver on here. Um, we'll pop it open, do that, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go fly. Nice. <clears throat> so that clarified something that this is a uh, Runcam Nano 2. Um, it's probably my favorite camera right now. Um, so I'm pretty stoked about that. That thing looks. Come on. That thing looks absolutely incredible. Um, so that's going to be great for that. So answer that question Runcam Nano 2. All right. So now we can look at the stack. So the stack looks like we have. Whoa, is that a Unify? No, looks like a Unify though. It does have a UFL connector on it, so we can at least swap that out easily if we need to. Um, pop this out of the way. I think it's just VHB on there. Yeah, it's a Rush Tiny Tank. I don't know anything about these, but hopefully it's fine. I'm definitely a TBS fanboy, not going to lie to you, so we'll see what that's all about. But that's there. There's some LEDs in there. Those will probably look pretty sweet. This plate is not even, I don't know, they're just really loose. And then I believe in the instructions, it tells us that this, uh, there's a little three pin connector here in the side of the flight controller. Okay, so basically it wants us to connect the receiver to here. 
and then solder the other end onto the actual physical receiver. There's a nice little stack in there, it looks pretty good. I'm going to have to change that out for a decent antenna. Hopefully the VTX is decent enough. Um, but yeah, so let's grab a receiver and get it slapped in there and I suppose we just add it to the top of this little stack here because there's plenty of room. Just trying to peel away just enough of the heat shrink. So when I'm working on things like this, I always just take off the uh, signal pad first only and then put the other signal pad on so that we don't forget which one's which. Let me make this a little shorter. It might have been a little too short. Oh well. Oh, Okay, so we got our little receiver system here set up. So that'll plug straight into the uh, flight controller down here. If I don't do it upside down. I'll just lay right on top with everything else. Ooh, it just might work. Okay, so we'll plug our camera back in. Receiver's on. So now we'll want to power it up and uh, bind the receiver. Plug it in the computer, make sure that the receiver and the flight controller are talking. And uh, then I believe we're good to go. So yeah, let me grab a, 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 a XT60 battery and uh, we'll make sure everything is communicating. I have bound in my controller. Uh, you can see that, well maybe you can't see, but there's a little light there that indicates that it's bound. So let's take it to the computer and make sure that everything is good to go before we uh, close it all back up. Okay, we got the drone plugged in. Go over COM3, connect, configuration. Ports. Okay, so they said serial two was TBS Smart Audio, which is good. Serial one, UART, config, S bus. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Set the maximum arm angle to 180 so that it doesn't ever flip over. I definitely want this lower by default. Save that. Connect PID tuning. I'll put my rates in here. I want, definitely want feed forward at much higher number. It's on beta flight 4.0.4, and then I'm going to go point 1.03, point 1.06, Good. Save. Those are my racing rates. Receiver. Okay, I'm going to plug in the drone and turn on my radio. Uh, yeah, right away. Look at that. Already bound. Looks like we might need to do some sub trim stuff. Kill. Cool. All right. Modes. Arm. Ox one. It's good. Don't want angle mode though, so we'll put that in the middle one. That way, it's there if we want it. But well, no. I'm just gonna turn that off. Who cares? Um. Flip over after crash, it's going to be aux 3 at the top. I don't know if there's a pit mode on this or not, so we won't worry about that. Let's do no accelerometers. Yeah, I think that'll do it. I think it'll fly now. Alright, just trying to get everything stuck inside of here. Keep the receiver down here on the side. I want that VTX antenna to come out the top. 
Make sure we're not pinching any of those motor wires. <laughs> it looks so cute with those super long antennas. Fix that in a second. I think the VTX antenna got wedged in there, but it's at the very top of the canopy, so I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. Look at that. We'll start with the uh, tri blades here. So props in. Kind of all murdered out. That looks pretty good. So these guys came with it. And last but not least, the Zattery strap. Cool. All right, I do believe that's ready for a maiden. So let's uh, take it outside and see what it's got. So I've got this really old and tired uh, Tattoo 1050-45C3 cell. I think this is way too big and way too old and tired, but it's like the only thing I've got right now that'll even work. Uh, so I'm gonna at least use this, we'll see what it's like, and then I'll try to report back with like some more size appropriate batteries. Whoa! Those LEDs actually shine through. I haven't powered this on without the, uh, um, or with the shroud on yet. But that actually looks pretty sweet. So I guess it may not be good for 3-cell. <laughs> Yeah, so the FC is off now. You remember how those LEDs were on? Now there's nothing. Even though it's plugged in. That's not good. Uh, I guess we'll pop that open and try to figure out what's going on with that. That's unnerving. ESC comes on, but no flight controller. Hmm. Maybe it was only 2S. Let's go find out. So I tore it apart and I found that there was a couple connect or one of the connections gotten loose when the drone kind of torqued like that. Uh, so I'm hoping that that fixes it. I'm going to do it, give it a quick arm, see if it kind of wiggles up. If it does, I'm going to drop the feed forward settings that I changed and see if that fixes it. Um, but otherwise I'm still going on 3S. I still think this is the right voltage for this. But yeah, you can see that the everything comes back on now. So I think all that happened was that a connection got wiggled loose. So let's give it a go. Well, it's still on this time. Let's take a look at the OSD here. Okay, here we go. Yikes. Closer. Still some flutters, but that's much better.
Motors are nice and cool. No extra heat in them or anything like that. Um, yeah, that flew better. The I don't know what's up with the tune, but for whatever reason, whatever was on there was way too much uh, P and D for me. I mean, once I got it going there in the yard, it's pretty quick. So uh, maybe we'll, next time we'll uh, we'll set up some gates. Got those over there and uh, get this thing run on a track just for kicks and giggles. <laughs> Alright, so to sum all that up, I mean, this thing moves, right? It, it's flying around my the little track in front of my house as fast as I can get it to go. Loving every second of that. It uh, I, It's a little bit noisier than I expected, so I kind of felt bad for my neighbors, though they have all given me so much grace with being able to fly here at, at my house. But yeah, I'm, I'm really liking this as kind of an alternative to the to five inch drones, you know, be, not being able to fly a five inch here. I mean, I have, but it's not a great idea. Um, you know, it, it feels more like a five inch than things that I've played with in the past. So definitely would uh, give a recommendation on the trans tech, uh, demon race. Um, and, uh, I, trans tech has been willing to give me an affiliate link for the, in the description below. Um, if you choose that you're interested in purchasing one of these, consider using that link, uh, because that, you know, sends me a kickback, calls me to make more videos like this and in the current uh, scheme of things where we are I uh, am spending as much time as I can making videos uh, because you know it gives you guys stuff to watch it gives me a little bit of revenue because you know all of my work is totally washed up so um, I thank you very much for watching it thanks for all of your support stay flying